everybody. My name is Mickey, and I am an IBA alumna. Today, I'm going to be walking you through my journey, not just of IBA, but mostly about what happens after graduation. If you have any questions for me in the meantime, feel free to just raise your hand. You don't need to wait until the Q&A afterwards. Um, I love an interactive session, so if you want to ask me questions, always do so, please. Also, to start off, are there any kind of topics that you were hoping that I would cover today? If there's anything super, super important that you want to free to raise your hand. If you're in the back, I cannot see you, so just shout. Anyone that wants anything specifically covered? The most relevant part of my study? which has brought me to where I am today. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Anyone else? Yes. Did you say the struggles of an IBA student? Okay, yeah. Oh, perfect, thank you. The support from Erasmus on getting started in your career. The support from Erasmus. Do you know what? Since these are three questions and I may not remember them, why don't we start with your questions? Let's do that. Struggles of an IBA student. Many struggles, emotionally, financially, but it's a lot of fun. I do feel the workload at times, study load, I mean, can be a little bit challenging. Um, I'm going to talk about the competitive nature of IBA as well. I don't think IBA is anything that none of you wouldn't be able to, to handle. Um, but sometimes you just got to juggle quite a few deadlines and then you want to have your social life as well. Because I always say that the biggest thing that you take away from IBA, uh, to answer your question as well, uh, about what's going to really help you in your work life is not necessarily what you learn during IBA, but the people with you in your classroom. Your network is truly your net worth. I didn't realize that when I was an IBA student, but now many years down the road, I realize how important it is to have been in the same classroom um, as all of my fellow students. Um, your question was? The support you got from IBA or Erasmus to get started in your career. The support I got from IBA or Erasmus to start my career. Well, that's actually a funny story, and I'm going to go into this as well, because I had a corporate career, and then I became an entrepreneur, and I think it was the moment when I started to become an entrepreneur where RSM and IBA and Erasmus has really, really tremendously helped me. Um, I'm going to dive d deeper into that one. All right, this is my journey, and this is not unique in any way. This is what you're going to be seeing for every single IBA student. The I in IBA, it truly stands for international. So I was born in Nepal many years ago, and then with my parents and my sister, we moved to the Netherlands when we were very young. So I grew up here, and as I was doing IBA here, there is the third year bachelor exchange, and that bachelor ex exchange brought me to Taiwan, which was such an incredible experience. Honestly, if you're going to do IBA, you have to do the exchange. I, I want to say that's probably top three highlights of my studies. For my master thesis, I did that in California, so I've done uh, six months of research at the University of California in Irvine. And then when I graduated, I moved to Ireland for my first job, where I stayed for five years. I'll be digging deeper into the companies I went and why I chose them. Then I moved to Singapore for two years, and I've been back in the Netherlands for the last uh, three, maybe four years it's been since I've been back in the Netherlands. And I think I'm going to stay here for a little while. Because honestly, it's not until you leave your home country that you truly realize and appreciate how good things are back at home. Right? A lot of time. Who, who, can I get a show of hands if you grew up in the Netherlands? Okay, that's quite a few. So me, as a high school kid, I used to complain about the weather in the Netherlands and the food is not so good here, and you know, there was a lot of things where I was like, oh, I wish I could live abroad one day or live in a really sunny destination. That's why I decided to move to Singapore. But it's truly not until you leave your home country that you realize, 
wow, actually things are really, really properly arranged in the Netherlands. And I'm talking, it's not just the weather, right? I loved Singapore. Is there anyone that's been to Singapore? Quite a few. How do you like the weather in Singapore? I was lucky that the weather was good when I was there. Oh, you were lucky the weather was good? I mean, the weather is generally always really good in Singapore, and that's initially why I wanted to go there. But I forgot about the humidity level in Singapore, yeah. which is a proper 80 to 90% every day. And so when I came back to the Netherlands, it was the first time ever that I appreciated Delicious, fresh air, right? Just being able to walk outside to Albert Heijn and be really, really comfortable. I was like, wow, I really love this about the Netherlands. Or that I know that we love to complain about things like, you know, Belastingdienst and everything that's to do with gemeentes and everything. But honestly, in some countries, I've lived in Ireland for five years, you can wait months for a process to, to go through. So that's why I've decided to come back to the Netherlands now. But, and that's why it is so important to be in an international classroom. Because even if you're not going to live across the globe, the really great part about IBA is you don't have to. You have the entire world already sitting in that classroom with you. They can teach you about all of the things, you know, the, 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 the culture, from wherever they come from. Um, a lot of us IBA kids are third culture kids, uh, and we do tend to move around the world. But I found it so amazing that on my first day of IBA, I was sitting next to a girl from Ecuador, and then on my right was a guy who had just come over from Montreal. And I was like, I never had this in high school. This is so cool. I really love that. But IBA is more than just international. So a lot of times when people ask me, what is IBA really, what did you seriously get out of it? Because it's just a study, right, at the end of the day. And I always say, if anything, IBA is a mindset. And it means a, a few different things. So the first thing that you need to know is if you're going to join IBA, you are going to join a very competitive classroom. And you can look at being competitive in two ways, right? It can be something that is a little scary, maybe nerve-wracking, intimidating, but you can also look at it in a way of, hey, this is going to really push me to bring out the best version of myself. And so you'll notice that IBA kids always choose option two. So this holds true for grades. So a lot of times after an exam um, or whenever the grades come out, all the IBA kids are asking, like, did you get an eight plus? I did, but I got a nine plus, you know? It's always this one upper mentality. For me, that worked really well because I lacked that competitive spirit in high school. And so it really pushed me to study just a little bit harder, work a little bit harder, do a, a little bit more of extracurricular activities. And if you do a little bit more every day, you're gonna see that by the end of the road, by the end of those three years, you are going to be an exceptional student in more ways than one, right? I'm not just talking about academic load. And the second one is you are going to really go global. I already talked about this uh, a little bit in my introduction, but you're going to go on exchange in your third year. You can choose an exchange or a minor, but I don't know many people that choose a minor. So if you go on exchange, honestly, it doesn't matter where you go to. You can go to England, you can go to the US, you can go to any country in the world. It doesn't matter where you end up. All that matters is that you have that experience. And as I mentioned, for me, my exchange was really, maybe it was even the highlight. I just said one of top three, but maybe even the highlight. Uh, it's, it's really amazing to watch yourself grow when you go to a completely foreign country where you know nothing, nobody, you don't have your parents. Everything is new. Uh, it's, it's a magnificent experience. IBA is also a very entrepreneurial mindset. So if you look up a few people that have graduated from IBA, you're going to find that a pretty good portion of us have ultimately become entrepreneurs. And that's because IBA really instills in us this business mindset. And I really love how curious most students are in the classroom curious to solve some of the world's biggest problems. There is, does anybody know the company called Housing Anywhere? Yeah, can I get a show of hands if you know Housing Anywhere? 
Well, if you don't, it's probably the place you want to check out. If you do decide to come here for IVA, uh, that's where you can get a room. And Housing Anywhere is a fairly big company, actually a really big company now, Rotterdam-based, and it was founded by an IBA alumni as well, Niels van Deure. So then there's a lot of these amazing stories of IBA kids who've gone on to do really great stuff. But being an entrepreneur doesn't only start when you graduate. RSM really encourages you to be entrepreneurial as much as you can during your studies. So what that looked like for me, four of my best friends and I uh, met them all through IBA. We created a student association that's called the New Fashion Society. And it was a very fun, or it is actually, a very fun community of students who are interested in any kind of creative jobs uh, that want to get connected to the fashion industry, luxury fashion. Um, we ended up having amazing partnerships with LVMH, with Nike, uh, with H&M. New Fashion Society, now it's, oh, I want to say it's probably 11 years old by now, because I graduated in 2013, so it's been a while. Uh, and we are the biggest, uh, the biggest association for creative arts across the Benelux. For me, it's really great to have been given that opportunity to create something like that during my studies. We did this in our second year of IBA. You, talked, uh, you asked me about the struggles of IBA, right? Well, if you think about struggle, that was my second year. Because we were doing a board year, and I don't know if anyone is familiar with board years, but one does not do a board year together with full-time studies you almost always take a year out, right? It's, it's gap year time. It was not gap year time for us. It was full-time studies and a board year, but then next to it being the board year was also the founding year. So full-time studies, board year, founding year. I didn't even know what a notary was. And suddenly we had to go to the notary. So these were things that, yes, they were a struggle in the moment, but that experience of founding a student organization, getting that to run, getting your first few members, and then passing it on to the next year, and then watching that still grow to this day 12 years later, is so incredibly fulfilling, uh, but it does come with struggles. So that might be one of my biggest struggles. Lastly, connecting with each other, and I touched on this very shortly just now, but your network is so incredibly important I can't stress this enough, and I wish that somebody had told me this before I started studying, that the people that you study with, they might become your business partners in the future, they might become your clients, or you might end up needing them one way or another. Maybe you just need this one person to provide that warm intro for you to whoever it is that you're, you're trying to get introduced to, right? Don't underestimate the power of a network, and it really, it's, it's so easy to build your network when you're 17 or 18, you're all first year students, and you realize that the, the guys and girls that you partied with and that you struggled with for exams together, that 10, 20, 30 years down the road, these are going to be the people that are going to be largely instrumental to your success. So after I graduated from IBA, I did a more technical master's. I did a master's in information systems to really try to kind of get that business slash IT alignment. Um, I'm also a, develop a hobby developer, I, I want to say. And so naturally for me, looking for my first job, I looked at tech companies, uh, particularly management traineeships. They're very popular. Ideal for a student who doesn't really know what she wants to do later in life. So I checked out all the management traineeships from all the big corporates, and I found my dream job with IBM, which was a rotating management traineeship, a 12-month program based out of Dublin, Ireland. And the idea was that every three months you'd rotate to a different department, just to give you a better idea of uh, what you could potentially be doing afterwards. I had a really, really good time there. I met a lot of amazing people, really grew my network there. But for me, it was a little bit too large, I want to say. Does anyone know how many employees IBM has? 
do we want to do a guess? Did I hear a guess from someone? Did you say 100,000? I think it's a little more. Did somebody else say something else here? 200,000. So it may have changed over time, but the day I joined, um, they had surpassed 500,000 employees. And, right? <laughs> And I, I remember my manager at the time saying, like, you know, we can fill multiple cities with the amount of employees we have there. And I remember thinking, whoa, I thought IVA class was big, but this is on a whole other level. And so it's a very interesting dynamic. I knew pretty fast into the program that I would take all of the learnings because the great thing about a management traineeship is you learn so much. They... In IBM, they send me to, it's called IBM University. So this company is so big, they have their own university, right? And I was like, this is pretty cool. I get to work and study at the same time, and I get paid for it, and I am in a foreign country, and like everything is great. But I also knew that it was a little bit too big for my liking. And so I started venturing out and looking for my second job, and I found that at Salesforce. Is there anyone that's familiar with Salesforce? Can you get a show of hands? Do we know? What does Salesforce do? Uh, I, I think it's uh, uh, a system that a lot of people use in the sales department, at least uh, how I know it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Absolutely, yes, it's a, it's a thank you. So Salesforce is, is a fairly huge, well fairly, it's a really huge multinational, uh, fantastic software very young, vibrant culture. And I got the opportunity to join Salesforce. And I remember saying at that time to my hiring manager, well, I'm kind of looking for something that resembles my studies. I studied IBA in Rotterdam, and my manager had no idea what I'm talking about because we're in Dublin, Ireland, right? So he's like, what is this IBA program? And I said, well, I just really like being in a classroom with people of all these different cultures. And I would love it if somehow the Salesforce environment could be some sort of extension of IBA. And so I ended up working at Salesforce for a good three and a half years. Uh, in case you're not familiar with the ecosystem in Dublin, it's honestly, they call it the Silicon Docks. It really is the Silicon Valley of Europe. All the major tech companies have their European headquarters there. And that means that all of the juniors, so fresh graduates, are all going to Ireland, and so we were the whole city is flooded with Dutchies, Belgians, Germans, Frenchies. Um, I met my fiance actually there as well. He's sitting right here actually, and he's French. And so for me, that was such a great extension of, of IVA. Had a really good time at Salesforce, but not good enough to stay. And what was really important for me, even though I I love both IBM and Salesforce, and I learned so much in both roles at both companies. I had always wanted to do something entrepreneurial, and I think this is something that IBA really instills in you. It's some sort of, I felt really restless during my time at Salesforce. I was like, I like my job, but I want something more, and I, I can't quite put my finger on what is that more. I just feel that I'm not 100% fulfilled. And I just feel like I could and should be doing more. And that was the day where I chose meaning over money. And I call it meaning over money because if you start a company, you let go of a very comfortable life. And I had a really comfortable life when I was at Salesforce. But for me, the realization was I don't need to have a comfortable life because I can always return to that comfortable life, right? What's a year or two years of struggling as an entrepreneur, trying to build something that I would feel would be very fulfilling for me? And if it doesn't work out, I'll go back to Salesforce or I'll go back to any other company. What's 12 or 24 months in your life? That's when I started building my first company and that was Minute. Minute is a student platform that it's basically a demand and supply platform, uh, mostly an automated software where students can find study-related side jobs. And so we do a lot of auto-matching. Essentially everything that happens on the platform, from the whole invoicing to all of the admin stuff, all of the legalities, we have automated all of that. 
Uh, importantly, Minute is all about anonymous applications. So funny enough, if you apply to a job, the company is going to see your profile, but isn't going to see the face behind the profile until they tell you that they're interested in it. And that worked really well, and we did that for the last three years. Um, and that went so well that I thought, hey, let's build a second label. It's probably important to know that I am doing this with my sister. My sister is my co-founder, actually. So we've been on this journey for four years. And then we built what is called Her Future. And Her Future is a label of Minute, which is a community of girls interested in tech. Uh, can be both girls that study computer science or data science, but a lot of IBA girls as well that are interested in pursuing roles, for example, as a data analyst or a business IT analyst. That's what we did with Her Future. This is very young. We built this in June. And the whole goal behind it was, can we create a community where we can unite girls in tech? And so this I very much see as an extension of what I did during IBA, which was starting the New Fashion Society. It was also about creating a community of girls interested in fashion and a creative industry. And now we're doing that again, but this time in tech. And we do all sorts of fun stuff, so um, I think I have it here. So we're doing a treasure hunt at booking.com. Is there anyone that's already been to an in-house day of a company? Are we too young for that? Can't see. I mean, there's some parents in the room as well. Ooh, what did you do? Yep, it's working. Hi. Uh, hello. So I had a chance of joining associations, and from that I had a chance for an in-house event at the Hennekens, mm -hmm. and also at the Craft Hens, which really interests me for that. I have a chance to see through their operations and also the part of how day-to-day -day life of the people at the company that really inspire me about the company and also uh, make me dream of an internship at that company. Oh, really nice. Well, perfect example. So do we all know what an in-house day is now? Anyone that's not familiar with an in-house day? Is a half, half day or a full day where you, as a student, go literally in-house to the office of a company. They often give a presentation. There is time to network. It just gives you an inside look into what it's like to work at that company. And it's quite fun. In-house days traditionally are a little boring, and by a little boring, I mean it's always the same format. It's always a case solving, presentation, and then networking, right? And so I said, well, if we're going to do our own thing, then we're going to shake things up a little bit. And so that's why instead of a case solving, we have a treasure hunt at the booking.com office paired with a professional workshop. We have gingerbread house making at Flow Traders. Um, together with recruiters, right? So it's just all these kind of creative ways to connect students with companies. That's what we're doing right now. And wasn't an easy decision to start her future or to start Minute. Definitely not an easy decision to leave my corporate job in pursuit of something else, not knowing what that something else was. Every new decision is going to be scary. It's never going to get easier. I'm here to tell you that even 10, 15 years down the road, you're still going to be faced with lots of uncertainty, um, such as life. Is there anyone that is already certain that they're going to apply for IBA? I see one hesitating hand. Is that a, you're certain or you're half certain? Certain, okay. Anyone else? Yep, a few. And how many of you are still kind of on the fence? No one is on the, oh, you're on the fence, okay. Who else? Oh, I think I saw a few there in the back. Okay, I think that's a good 50-50 ratio of being certain and kind of being on the fence. Why are you on the fence? I'm not sure about the, I'm not sure about what I want to do in the future. You're not sure about what you want to do in the future. And by future, you mean after graduation? Yeah. OK. That's very valid. I'm also here to tell you that with IVA, you can go every single direction. If you want to work in corporate, you can do that. You want to become a founder, probably 10, 20% of all the IVA people in my classroom have gone on to become entrepreneurs. 
There's lots of consultants, and I'm just reflecting back on my own class, right? Uh, lots of consultants, lots of analysts, a good portion of bankers. There's a lot of IBA people in London, honestly. So many are in uh, M&A or investment banking, quite a lot, a smaller amount in private equity, uh, but that one's pretty, pretty popular as well. But there are so many ways. I mean, there's so many IBA people, right? I think that's also what's really nice about IBA, that it's kind of broad, right? It's broad enough for you to decide what you want to do later on in life. You still have your masters to specialize in. So the good part is that you don't need to have it all figured out right now. But I do get that every new decision is a scary thing because a lot of times, I'm also a mentor for a lot of students, and a lot of students always tell me, well, I wasn't sure if IBA was going to be the right choice. Like, ultimately, I chose it because the application deadline was coming up, so I decided to just do it. But what if it was the wrong choice? Or, you know, what if I'm passing up on another really good opportunity? What if I end up not liking it? What if I fail and drop out of the program? So many questions. But I always say that you never know these things in advance and you're not going to know them. You're not going to have the answers to this until you actually do it. Right? A lot of people tell me that they're not sure whether or not they're on the right path. And I always tell them, doesn't matter. No matter what you choose, and I'm really not here to tell you that you have to choose IBA or that you shouldn't choose IBA. It's completely your own choice. I can tell you what IBA meant for me. And for me, it gave me such a big network. It gave me such a, such a mindset of being really curious. Um, I became, I think, a lot more ambitious being surrounded with all these other ambitious kids in the classroom. I was like, well, it's so cool that this person is doing A, B, C, and I should be doing that as well, right? And in my first year of IBA, I always felt that I was just falling short because I was like, why am I not doing a board year and three extracurriculars and um, my GPA is not a nine plus, like, oh my God, I'm falling behind. And then I just decided to change things and uh, make it a really killer second year. And that's why I say, and it sounds so cliche, but it's also so true, and maybe the parents in this room can agree with me, that in the end, you're always going to end up where you were meant to be. What you see in this photo is the launch event of her future, so our newest label. And when we started this, we really weren't sure if we were going to pull it off. Would people come to our event? We're just going to do it. We're just going to pull it off. And we ended up with 200 women in one room. We had a great time. This is, this is a very quick recap slide of the past four years. If you had told me when I was still working at Salesforce that one day I would be able to show this slide and be able to put all of these things on this slide, I would have been like, okay, I'm quitting my job immediately because it's, it is a no-brainer to leave my job and move on to something else. But that's why I say we don't know that these things are going to happen three, four, five years down the line. That's why every decision is scary. It was such a scary decision to, to leave corporate life but now we have over 20,000 students. We have a bunch of investors. We're backed by venture capital. We've been in all of the major media. Uh, we're serving some of the world's biggest companies. I'm so happy and fulfilled when I think about the things that we do every day. And every day I think, oh, I'm glad that I took that leap. And I'm really glad that my fear at that time didn't stop me from taking that next step, right? You are always going to end up where you are meant to be. My, one of my really probably most exciting, uh, happiest moments uh, in the last four years with Minute and with her future is uh, winning the RSM Alumni of the Year Award last year. Is anyone familiar with this award that RSM gives? No? All new? Yeah, oh, you know it, right? You, 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 what is this? Yep, indeed, thank you. So RSM, um, in an effort to really motivate its students and its alumni to really bring out the 
best version of yourself, not just during your studies, but beyond your studies as well. Every year has this big award ceremony happening. There are three different categories and they always honor three nominees or three winners actually. There's three types of prizes. Um, and it's really about who is making a difference in the world, who has really taken whatever they've learned during their RSM days, uh, IBA or a master, whatever you've done at, at RSM, who has really taken that and turned it into something big and inspiring for someone else. So for me, having gone down that path of corporate and then um, deciding to take that leap and kind of just try entrepreneurship, uh, but trying really hard at it. And then getting this recognition from RSM was a really big milestone. And again, it's, it's another, because um, I think there was a question here at the beginning, another example of the things that RSM does to kind of help you in your career, because this comes with a lot of publicity as well, which was very good for business. And that's also the reason why I am here today, because I believe in paying it forward. It's been a long time since I've graduated, but I think that no matter how many generations will pass, every student is going to be faced with the same decisions, the same kind of uncertainty and uncomfortableness. I hear it every year again from the students. And I think what's really important is that an alumni, and I'm, I'm not an exception, like all the people in IBA, um, are very similar to me, have very similar stories as mine. And we're all here to tell you that if you do decide to go down the IBA path, I can guarantee you it's going to be an amazing ride. Not an easy one by any means. It's really going to be a struggle at times. It's not always going to be fun. But if I look back at IBA, if I could do it again, I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. I'm certain I can also achieve similar results if you choose another study. At the end of the day, it's about you as a person, right? But for me, what's really important is I need to be in a room of people that are like-minded. I need to be in a room with people that push me to, to be better. I want to be surrounded by people that are better, bigger, smarter than me so that I can be inspired by them and then hopefully one day become like them as well. And that leaves me with a little bit of food for thought three things. First one is uh, it's really okay if you haven't figured it out yet. It always looks as if everybody has their life together. I'm really here to tell you that's not true. Even for an IBA alumni, we never fully have our lives together. Uh, parents, maybe not as well, right? There's always something we are worrying about. Uh, some people are just better at hiding it than others. The second one, probably the most important one, is that it is much less about what you learn. So don't be too concerned with all of the courses in IBA. There's going to be a few courses that you're really going to love. There, there might be a few that you'll love a little bit less, but at the end of the day, it's the people that you do IBA with. That's the biggest, by far the most valuable asset you're going to get from this program. IBA people, they really go places. I am so inspired by where all of my classmates have gone. We go all over the world. There are so many of us in the US now. There's so many, as I mentioned, a lot of them in finance in London. But when I was living in Singapore and I didn't know anyone, I actually reached out to RSM and I was like, do you do any kind of alumni events? Because I'm new here and I don't know anyone. And they said, we're actually doing an RSM alumni drinks next week. I went there, I ran into one guy from my IBA class that I didn't know he was living there because we, we, we'd not been in touch for a long time. Um, and then I made so many new friends and so I find it really easy to make new friends across the globe uh, if you come from IBA. And lastly, I do keep talking about that IBA is very competitive and yes, it does force you to, to become the best version of yourself, but also don't let it drive you crazy because Yes, people will make you think sometimes that IBA is a competition, but life is not a competition. And this is something that uh, I personally really did wrong in my first few years after graduating. I was very cautious of, hey, if I choose this traineeship, is that going to look good on my CV? Is that on par with what my classmates are doing? But wait, this guy got a job at McKinsey and I'm only going to IBM. Should I be 
aiming higher? Am I not a good graduate then? Right? And you're going to see that a lot of this, these thoughts, this uncertainty, this constant comparing, is, I think it's, it's very um, natural to IBA people. But over time, you'll learn to get out of that as we get older, as we get more near, and as we progress through our careers. I have my own path, though. So, are we still hearing my mic? It's my own path. I do it as I want. People told me I was insane for leaving such a comfortable job at Salesforce, and I said, I have nothing to lose except 12 to 24 months of amazing learning. If it doesn't work out, I'm back. go back to another job. It's all good. And then I remember one of my friends telling me, but Mickey, you might lose out on a promotion if you leave. And that's 24 months that you'll be behind on other people who start at the same time as you. And probably me, as a fresh graduate, that would have that would have gotten to me. <laughs> I would have really been like, oh my God, I don't want to have 24 months behind the rest. That's like staying in IBA two for two years, you know? But as you get older, you realize that none of that matters. So I chose to chart my own journey anyways. And I hope you will too. Probably um, professional life is, is a long time out for you, so you don't have to worry about any. The only thing you need to worry about now is, are you going to do IVA or not? I really hope you will, but if you don't, I'm sure that you're going to end up in an amazing place as well, regardless of what it is that you, that you choose, because it's always you creating your own journey. That is all from me for today. If you want to connect, if there's any. Thank you. We have a question here? Yes, I'm not sure if the microphone works. Does it? Does the microphone work? No. Um, business administration is quite a broad study. So your, your subjects touch upon things, but you don't really know a lot about one thing. Has that ever made you um, wonder whether specialization was something that would have helped you? Or is the broadness actually been helping you? OK. So the question is that IBA has a very broad curriculum. Um, would I have benefited from maybe a little bit more specialization or from it being so broad, right? Both. I do highly encourage everyone that does IBA to go ahead and do a master's as well. That's usually the moment in which you decide to specialize. I decided to specialize in something a little bit more uh, IT related. Uh, that's, for me, that has been the major uh, trigger for me getting my job in a tech traineeship. But I also see a lot of kids who graduate from IBA and they end up in consulting roles without specializing in anything. And same for finance. You can do the master finance and investments at RSM, which is, by the way, a really good master's, but you don't necessarily have to do it. So it really depends on what you want to do afterwards. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yes. When I left, like when you when you left your job to start your entrepreneurship, how did you generate income at the start of that? How did I generate? Uh, that's a good question. How did I generate income when I left uh, my job? Well, it was a very comfortable job. I will say with a comfortable salary, and that usually means that you can save up a little bit. So that's what I've done. Uh, I also recommend anyone who's not doing it yet to always diversify your finances and never be fully dependent on a paycheck alone, because that can be a little bit dangerous, something, especially if you want to go down the entrepreneurial route. Um, we did attract investors as well quite early on, about 12 months into it. Any other questions? Yes. Thanks so much for sharing the great journey, really inspiring. Thank you. Um, I have a question a bit related to the first one, like very broad study. Uh, how, if you compare it to liberal arts, which is also very broad, uh, I mean, the very general question, but like, what are the differences? <laughs> If you compare it to liberal arts... Yes, because it's also the study which is super, super broad, and yeah. you decide later on where you want to go. Got you. 
not sure if I can give you the answer to that because I have no clue what you learn in liberal arts. I can tell you that in IBA, it's about 50% quantitative and 50% qualitative. So this is, I mean, it's a Bachelor of Science, right? So this is very much not an arts degree. A lot of things that you learn in IBA are uh, about strategic thinking. Um, is it 50% quant? It might be even a little bit more. There's quite a lot of number crunching in IBA. Um, to my understanding, at least in my days, it was very analytical, and I see that with most people um, in terms of the roles that they end up into. It's usually something finance or analytical based. So it might be a little bit more on the quant side than perhaps liberal arts. But again, I'm not sure what you learned there. Thanks. Mm -hmm. If anyone needs to go to their second session, I do realize we're a little bit over time, so feel free to head to your next session if you have to.